going to be talking about one of the most uh, um, searched keywords on, on Google search. Yeah? Let's talk about uh, trends for a second. If you guys recall a couple of years ago, there was a huge trend around artificial intelligence. That, that trend moved into uh, SPACs and SPVs. And then that trend moved into NFTs. And then that trend was <laughs> overtaken by the word meta and metaverse. Yeah? And possibly this trend is here to stay for quite a longer time because of all of the different uh, investments that are happening in the space. Today we're going to start with you, Nicolas. Yeah? We're going to start with you to help us understand what is the metaverse? Well, uh, first of all, thank you very much to our host in this city. Sevilla is one of my favorite cities in the world, so that was a great excuse to leave North America to come here. Um, I was given the very easy task to explain the metaverse in three minutes. So bear with me, I'm going to oversimplify a lot of subjects, but I think we need to get on the same page on a definition of what the metaverse is. So when we have conversation about the metaverse, it's much easier to have this conversation. So the word metaverse uh, started about 30 years ago with Neil Stephenson's book called Snow Crash. Now, we need to understand the metaverse as a change in technology and a change in be of behavior. So technology changes with behavior. So if I take us back to Web 1. So Web 1 was about taking banners on the street and then putting, putting them in a digital format that was called the internet. Words and images. Now, if fast forward to 08, um, it was Web 2. Web 2 was about conversation. We needed to talk to our consumers. We needed to talk to our fans. So the exchange of conversation, that's where social media came about. Web 3 is the new revolution. We will go from 2D to 3D. Web 3 will be about ownership, and metaverse will be about immersion. So I was thinking, how do I explain the metaverse very easily? So before coming here, I sat down with my 75 years old Italian father, and I say, if I can explain to my father what is the metaverse, I'm good, it, it's going to be easy. So after five years of conversation with, with him, I came out with this definition. So take all websites in the world and put them in front of you. So you will have the Betis website, you will have the Sevilla FC website, the Cinco website, the Adidas website. You would have your social media, Facebook for example. Put them flat on the table and make them 3D and start walking around. So you will create neighborhoods. There's going to be the entertainment neighborhood. There's going to be the sports neighborhood. Why people are buying land in the metaverse? Because they hope that they're going to buy a land right next to one of their digital stadium. So their land is going to be worth a lot of dollars so they can sell it. The way we're going to buy in the metaverse is going to be crypto. Crypto is very complicated, but just to make it simple, when I buy something in the metaverse, I'm going to buy in crypto. When I buy something, so let's say I buy this bottle in the metaverse, I need to make sure that this bottle is unique. So NFT is going to do this for us by giving us the unicity of an, a digital item in the metaverse, making it unique. And all of this is going to be possible by the blockchain technology. So it's, it's quite easy. We went from 2D. We broke it down into 3D. Why? Because gaming is getting more and more popular. The immersion went from text to images to video. What is the next step? Immersion. So that's the metaverse. Now, there's nothing right now called the metaverse. If anybody tells you I'm the metaverse or we're the metaverse, it's not true. There are many, many, many metaverses out there. So it's going to take about, I would say, 8 to 10 years before there's a consolidation of what the metaverse is. So we're going to see several metaverse coming together. If I ask you a question, who owns the internet today? Nobody. Nobody owns the internet. Well, the metaverse will be the same thing. It will be an era. Nobody will own the metaverse. That's why the blockchain technology will probably be the technology that will support the metaverse with the decentralized metaverse. If you want to know more about this, I'll be in the cocktail. You can ask me. I can talk to you for hours on this. Nicolas, I'm not 75, but I'm not following. Okay? So let's bring it down. Like, let's bring it down one level. This is a football audience. These guys work at football <clears throat> clubs, football federations, football leagues. Yep. You also work with sports properties. Yeah? Yep. Help, give us a couple of examples. Like, what, how, for, for example, how can the metaverse help a football property outside of the pitch, you know, outside of the 90 minutes, right? what can be done? So what we see a lot is the engagement during the game. 
what's happening is that there's a game outside the game being played here. If I take the example of F1 and what they did with Netflix, their, their long documentary, it was hugely popular in the US. Why? Because we talked about everything around the, the drivers, everything around the game. So the game outside the game is going to be very important. So how do you know more about the player, the family's player? You need to be immersed, maybe in the kitchen of one of the player's family, so you can be there with them while they're watching a game. So this idea of getting immersed into digital world and be, getting closer to the action is something that is super important. Um, Nicolas, thank you so much for bringing this up. Just a, a personal story. I have a 16-year-old uh, kid, you know, our older kid. He's in love with Lewandowski. He absolutely loves Lewandowski. He's never seen uh, a full game of Bayern Munich. Yep. He loves the Polish national team. <laughs> He's never seen Poland play in his life. But it's just because Lewandowski gives him lots of goals when he plays FIFA. Yep. Similarly with Drive to Survive. He became obsessed with Formula One, but he would never watch a Formula One race. Right? So that's what I'm saying. We need to understand the change of behavior that is happening. Nobody and a younger age will sit down for two hours being focused on a screen. Nobody does that. Talking so. about the change of behavior, yeah. let's move now to Jorge and to Ramon. Jorge, let's start with you. <clears throat> you are managing one of the top clubs in Spanish football, a club that has national and international following. How are you seeing the fans' behavior changing or evolving currently? Yes, of course, the, the expectations of our fans have changed big time over the last 15 years, no? alongside team performance. No? So expectations grew higher eh? as the team was winning the Europa League, today's, uh, tonight's trophy, eh? uh, for six times, the last one in 2020. Each time that was a huge celebration, every time we, we won those trophies. Now, um, recently, we have managed to secure, it seems, a position in Champions League. No? So we managed to qualify for three years for Champions League, there were no celebrations at all. So that says a lot about our, about our fans' expectations eh? and, and their demands. No? Now, uh, I think we should stop for a second and say, uh, who are our fans nowadays? No? Uh, who are our fans? Are they just our, our members, our dear uh, stadium attendees who sing uh, our anthem at every match? Are they our registered users in our database? Are they our social media followers? Or even more broadly, are they the 280 million fans, sympathizers, that Nielsen says we have globally. You know? And I think that's the beauty of the jobs that we have. Yeah? So we need, to, we need to manage for our closest, most loyal fans, but keeping an eye on that global reach yeah? and trying to expand it. You know? I think that's the, that's the beauty of the, of the jobs that we, and the responsibilities that we have. You know? How do we approach it in Sevilla FC? For us, what is crucial is the quality of the data, the quality of the data that we manage. You know? so, the way we look at it, uh, no matter how uh, you first contacted us, mm -hmm. we will assign to you a single user identity. A single user identity. And from that starting point, we can establish consumption behavior, um, consumption patterns. We can customize offers. Uh, and that's hugely important. Yeah? Uh, and then also with the attendance, or with the assistance of our uh, data department, we can introduce predictive algorithms. So let me give you a few examples. For example, with our stadium attendees, we know the ones who will more likely stop by our stadium store. And therefore, we can approach them with a customized offer. We know the ones who will more likely have a bite during the match. So we can approach them with a customized offer with, through our click and collect platform. Or even, I mean, very clearly, we know the ones who will more likely not attend. So we, we can anticipate that and offer them seat transfer. No? So the basis for all that is the famous single user identity. No matter how you first registered with us, be it uh, uh, via our app or via our website or via our, the Wi-Fi in our stores, uh, what have you, you will always be linked to the club and to every relationship with the club through that single user identity. And then more broadly, what we're trying to do is to, uh, is to segment and customize communications based on demographics eh? so we can approach new generations, Gen Z, Gen Alpha. Eh? I'm losing the, uh, yeah, yeah. the count. Gen Z, Gen, Gen Alpha with very different expectations. And we can also do so demographically. You know? So say, for example, we take our fans in Mexico. You know? we, our, our followership, our interaction and, and engagement in Mexico is growing fourfold you know? since we hired uh, Tecatito 
fourfold, which is massive. No? So what we did recently was to uh, approach our registered fans in Mexico with a customized offer presented by the player himself. And that worked really well. The interaction and having the player in front of you offering you a customized, customized merchandise. No? That, was, that was really powerful. So for us, it's all about engagement. And it's also all about uh, generating income. No? So that's why we very recently we uh, we upweighted uh, our digital marketing team. Uh, so we so we hired experts in CRM and in user experience because we want to go beyond that. Um, and we need to keep you know uh, running uh, this uh, ever-changing game. And the last thing that I'd say is uh, we're all looking forward to uh, to the imminent uh, imminent launch of our fan token. Uh, that is going to happen uh, before the beginning of next season. And I can say, I'd like to say it will be a fan token launch like no other, because we want our key partners and sponsors to get involved, to get connected with Sevilla's society at large. And we also want to be uh, hand in hand with socios.com, a catalyst for the creation and acceleration of startups in, startups in Andalusia. So, just to give you a little bit of a feel about how we are approaching the evolving expectations and the way to connect with, with our fans. Fantastic, Jorge. Well, we're going to come back to these topics in a second. Ramon, uh, on to you. Congratulations on the, on the most recent uh, victory of Copa Thank del Rey. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, from, from your perspective, tell us a little bit about how are you seeing the Real Betis fan evolving as well? Are you spotting similar trends like what Jorge mentioned? Are there any other trends that you're looking at? Yes, well, in our opinion, uh, I, I, I agree with, with Jorge that uh, uh, when the uh, Web 2.0 arrives, there is now a, a challenge in all the clubs, in the single sign-on, you know, to know your client and to, to offer a customized proposal, because any of them wants to be an independent and unique client. You know? But coming back to the metaverse, that is the, the topic of the today board, to the conversation, in my opinion, uh, Metaverse has always existed. Yeah, I remember when I read the book, The Never End Story, The Lord of the Rings, you know, I entered myself in a new world. You know, and then video games arrived, you know, and video games, there were completely new world. You know, and with video games, you could also interact. You know. But the big thing that changed with the uh, Web 2.0 is the conversation, where everybody understood that people, they really want to, to create communities. They really want to have conversations. They really want to have a new identity in a new world. So now Metaverse arrive, and you have a new world with interaction. It means there will be a lot of potential in there. So, you know, a new world where people are, and Gen Z, for sure, they, they are going to be there, and they are going to be there interacting. So uh, for a football club, I think we have to be there. But there are also some doubts, in my opinion, for me, for Metaverse. For example, there will be a unique Metaverse, only one or many. So there will, you, you talk about neighborhoods. There will be only one sport neighborhood or many around the world. Do we have to build only one stadium in the Metaverse? Or do I have to build 10 real Betis stadiums in the Metaverse? No? There will be open, like internet. In the internet, it's an open source. And for a property like us, it's very easy to do business there. You create your e-commerce platform, uh, so you start selling. But for example, in social media, it's more close. There are some big players, like uh, the big, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that control the market. And for a third party like us, sometimes it's difficult to monetize. Uh, still, there is a lot of value to be there in social media, but the, the direct monetization is uh, still a challenge for us. Huh? So Metaverse will be more open or will be more close? We don't know. But what is sure is something that is going to be very important. So we have to try to enter in Metaverse as soon as possible. And uh, how are we going to approach this new world? No? My idea is when you don't know a new, a new world, a new market, you always try to go with somebody that knows the market, or it's, or it's better always to go to be with somebody with you rather than go alone. No? So our first step is to, to move with La Liga. La Liga is, uh, is trying to introduce the industry in the metaverse. So the first step in Real Betis is to go with the industry in the metaverse. One, once we arrive there, we will try to do our own strategy to, to make uh, our different values. But the first step is to try to move with the industry into the metaverse. Nicolas, if we pick up a little bit what 
uh, Ramon was talking about. And I'd like to go back to the metaphor that you, I should, the, the, the visual that you put in front of us, right? You take 2D websites, you put them on the floor, and then you <coughs> stack them up, and then you have a 3D world, and then you go, you can navigate. Yep. So you are hinting to more and more collaborations that have to happen, more and more synergies that have to happen so yep. that brands or football clubs, in this case, can extract as much value and can generate as much value. Can, can you share a little bit your insights there? Yeah. So, and, and I will pick up on what you just said, um, closed metaverse compared to open. So we call them centralized metaverse, which are video games, um, social media, so we're talking about meta, they're doing a metaverse, and there are decentralized metaverse like Decentraland, Sandbox. Decentralized metaverse are based on the blockchain, which means that piece of land that you buy is yours. It means that you can sell it to somebody, it's like a website, my website is mine, so that piece of land in a decentralized metaverse will be mine, which gives me or you or any football club uh, possibility to do whatever you want. So that will give you a lot of, of, of power in this. I think for football clubs, we go back to teams. So we work a lot in America with uh, basketball, baseball, hockey. I'm Canadian, of course. Um, I think the first thing you, everybody needs to understand is that we need to digitalize all the assets. You know, by doing this and doing this, everything will be 3D. So first step, digitalizing the assets, the most important assets, is the most important thing. Because you will use those assets to create virtual world where people can go, or use those virtual world in other metaverses. So first, digitalize your asset. Secondly, try, try which means that go with La Liga, try the metaverse, try to create your own virtual world, try to, we need to try different things. We're seeing behaviors changing a lot and we're, by trying things, we're gonna know how people behave and we're gonna pick up on, on the way they wanna interact with us. The third part is monetization, which is hugely important. So first, we need to see also the assets in the metaverse, new sponsorship assets for our partners, and also all those digital assets are gonna be worth something in the metaverse. You probably all heard about shoe, digital shoes getting sold for a million dollars or painting. This is a big buzz, but it's gonna slow down, and the value of a digital asset will be important in the future. The kids right now, so the average age in all metaverse combined is 12 years old right now, 12. But they're buying things, they're buying things for their avatars. 10 years from now, they're going to buy things digitally. So we need to understand that the digital assets is an important thing. So sponsorship value because you're creating a new immersive world to be able to engage. You said um, we want to know what they do in every aspect of our digital ecosystem. Well, virtual space are going to be a place where they're going to stay a little bit longer. They get more immersed because of the storytelling. Storytelling for brands or for, for teams is going to be more and more important. The story of your player, the, story, the history of the club. So immersive world or metaverse are going to be important so we can work on storytelling, which is part of the success of the future and part of the value of what the metaverse is going to offer. Social media is great, but it goes too fast. You zap social media the, the same way you zap your ch channel on TV. So how can we take the fans and bring them into a world where they can stay a little bit and we tell a little bit of the story, players, club, etc. So this is the untapped value <clears throat> in metaverses and, and what the future holds. Thank you, Nicolas. Jorge, you mentioned that you are growing your digital team. Yeah, you mentioned you, you have invested on new capabilities such as CRM, user experience. What are some of the, what are some of the new revenue streams um, that you are aiming for? What, what, what do you think? Will, will come? I think we're, we're living really exciting times. No? So I joined the club only 10 months ago, and I think it's a fascinating time because, I mean, what we have in front of us is a, is a revolution in sports marketing. No? Uh, so everything that is coming at us is new. No? So talk about trading, talk about crypto, talk about NFTs, talk about digital, talk about the metaverse. I mean, it's just massive, no? and, and that is hugely exciting. No? Um, so if we talk about the revenue streams, uh, First of all, the monetization of that database uh, that I referred to before is a key element to that. No? Um, that's, a, that that's, an important, that's an important element. No? And, um, and, and that is something we will continue to do. Um, uh, and by the way, uh, I want to say that a lot of the paid campaigns that we do are related to a database, database expansion. So social media is a key growth engine uh, for that database. No? That, that is, 
that is that is hugely important. No? And then we also try to cover all the basics as to, uh, for example, the inclusion of ad servers uh, on our website, uh, the monetization of our uh, social media channels, uh, the production and development of uh, branded premium content, which is something we need to double down on because content will be key eh, no matter what. Eh? So that is something we need to, to continue to do. No? So all, that, all those are revenue streams that we consider to be already uh, like established, eh? but that we need to continue developing. No? Let me elaborate a little bit more on something that, that we all believe is a fascinating front, no? uh, and, and that is uh, Sevilla, Sevilla FC's data department. Okay? So we created two years ago a dedicated data team. They are, their goal is to generate resources through the growth in value and performance of our teams, and also through the growth and full mobilization of our fan base. So, the team is led by a chief data officer who's here with us and who will be attending, uh, uh, sitting here in one of the panels, together with data scientists and with software developers. And the way these guys work is a completely uh, transversal, cross functional approach to work. Huh? So, re so they relate to all areas in the club. No? And their deliverables are twofold. Huh? So, what these guys provide is in depth analysis and reporting, and reporting to support key decision making in the sports and business areas. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The second thing that for me is fascinating is the, their own development of web-based data intensive customized applications. No? And I'm talking about things like AI football, which is artificial intelligence applied to scouting and to the construction of the first team. So this is now a key vehicle, a key tool for Monchi. Eh? as we plan for the next season, right? AI football, we call it. Then we have AI Raider, which is about the early identification of young talent. So it's a tool that will enable us to identify outliers, really young people who are performing, developing much faster uh, than, than expected. And then the last one refers to my previous, uh, to my previous, uh, my previous point. No? So we call it AI fans, so it's artificial intelligence applied to what we call the fan journey. So it's about it's about establishing and predicting uh, the consumption behavior and the interaction behavior that I referred to uh, before. No? So, I mean, it's really fascinating. Uh, and allow, allow me to say that Sevilla FC, by the way, is open to commercialize these tools. Eh? Uh, that, is a, that is something that I wanted to, uh, to put on the table. And that will also connect with other plans that we have. So, for example, we, we're going to run in June the first of a series of hackathons in India with our partners from FC Bengaluru United and in Andalusia. So tech amateurs and tech developers will be working on challenges presented to them by our data department. Things related to injury prediction, stadium attendance, this kind of thing. So it's a really fascinating world that we also want to open up to our fans uh, locally and also in, 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 other, parts of, in other parts of the world. No? So, I mean, it, it's all, it's all, like I said, it's a revolution that we need to tap into eh, and do our best effort to, uh, to capitalize on. The last thing I would like to mention is, uh, again, the blockchain. No? So I mentioned before uh, fan tokens. I mentioned before fan tokens, but with our main sponsor, Naga, which is a leading trading uh, platform, we are in the process of evaluating uh, the, the launch of our first collectible NFTs. Mm -hmm collectible NFTs. And last but not least, also together with them, hand in hand with them, we're also working on what would be our first incursions on, in the metaverse, no? uh, that we also want to experiment no? as a club. No? So that would be, I mean, uh, an overview of these new revenue streams no? from database monetization, which, by the way, that database is more and more important for our sponsors and partners. So in our conversations with our, with our sponsors, uh, the possibility of running segmented branded content through that database, and that is having more and more space in our discussions with them. No? So database monetization, then we have this fascinating, this big bet that the club is making on, on the data department, mm -hmm. and then you know all things related to blockchain that we need to experiment on, no? decisively and, 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 I mean, humbly, but also decisively. No? There is an underlying data story that, that you tell, you know, in all the messages yeah. that you're launching, which is, we need to collect the data, we need to clean it, we need to organize it, we need to distribute it or aggregate it, 
right? And then we need to start building on top of that knowledge, you know, starting from disseminating knowledge for improved decision making, going to predictive, going then eventually one day to prescriptive. Right? Can, can I say something also? Um, Jorge, you said um, content is king, and we heard that for many, many years. But in Web3, context will be queen. So, and that's super important, bringing people in context. People get information, fans get information so fast. There's so much information that we get in a day. If we're able to bring people in a context, that would allow people to consume that information in a more storytelling type of way, and that would allow for richer conversation um, and, and, and better relationship with sponsors. A sponsorship is about changing perception and changing behavior. How do I change a perception? By telling you the story of my brand. Why am I doing here? I need a place that has a context to be able to say it, and then Metaverse and Web3 is going to allow that context that we don't have anymore because information content goes so fast at us. On, on sponsorship, I'd like to go to Ramon. Uh, Ramon, what, through digital and through data, what new value do you think the club can create for its current sponsors and partners or even for future ones? It's the most important thing, in my opinion, is what Jorge was talking about is that technology is really important for the future fans. Yeah. Because now we are thinking about our current fans, but maybe in the future, the fans are going to behave in a very different way. You know? yeah. uh, for example, if you, if you look into one study from the, from the UEFA, from the uh, European Club Association, they state that uh, young people below 24, 40% of these young people don't like football or don't, don't pay attention to football. So there is a challenge for us because this, is a, this, this will be our, our class in the future. So uh, to talk to them, you have to talk to them with the tools and in the, the products, the experience they, 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 they need or they require. So this is why uh, to our sponsors, they are, of course, they are going to demand us that they want to, to arrive to this new target. And in my opinion, for example, with the NFT or, or the fan tokens, always say that the approach is, okay, you can sell the fan token to Betty's fan. And in my opinion, it's on the other way around. With fan tokens, I will be able to arrive to different targets that are based on technology, and there will be a the real approach to real Betis, thanks that you are in the fan token world. So, because, uh, it, so it's, a, it's a different way to arrive at a, a bigger target. No? So for our sponsor, of course, for example, the local beer, Ruth Campo, no? Jorge knows very well this brand of beer. No? <laughs> And you know the Scottish and the, the German people today, they are going to sell out all Sample the beers <laughs> in the city. No? Cruz Campo will be very Cruz happy Campo. tonight. So Cruz Campo has been our sponsor from Real Betis and Seville FC for the last 30 years. You know, even more. Uh, yeah. even, even more. And they have the bar in our, in our stadium. But the, the, the bar is not uh, offer, offering them any value. For any, so, but they are asking to us, OK, we want experience for the young people. We want to do activations in the digital world. So imagine the metaverse, we can create a friendly matches uh, with our fans. And here, after the friendly match, you always finish in a, in a, in a bar taking a beer, uh, what we call the third half. No? So if you create this experience in the metaverse, there will be a more engaged with the normal world because they, they, are, they, they have the, the habit to do what normal we do here, is to have a beer after the match. No? So this is, uh, I think, that uh, our sponsor, of course, we, ha we have to work with them because they, they, they are asking us to do different things. They are not looking anymore for the partner, and they are looking for digital activations, digital assets, and of course, they want to know the client, and they want to offer a customized uh, experience for any of them. And uh, Jorge, going to you just for a second, the story that you tell is a story that is not very typical. Uh, for a football club, independently of where, where, where it, is, it is based. You talk about data scientists, developers, CRM managers, user experience managers, and so on. <coughs> um, this morning, we heard from uh, Fabio, I'm not sure if he's here, but he was, he was mentioning that one of the, uh, one of the um, uh, three recommendations, the first one was don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to hire people. Don't be afraid to hire talent that you don't really know their area of work. But if you want to step into the B2C space, as he was saying, you need to have people who come from the B2C space as well. Um, what, what was, if, if there is one, and I do realize this was before your time with the club, 
what was the insight? Or what was the, the moment where the club said, listen, we have to invest on this, otherwise we will lag and lag and lag, and by the time we realize it, it, will, it might be too late for us. What, what, what happened? First of all, let me pick up on something that Ramon just said. I think mm -hmm. uh, uh, also our relationship, I mentioned before there's a revolution in sports marketing, no? and that is also changing the way we relate to traditional sponsors. No? Mm -hmm. so, so now when you discuss with your, you know, with long-time sponsors like Cruz Campo, no? uh, um, which is a company that I know so well, no? so what they expect nowadays from us is very different from what they expected before. So mm -hmm. now it's not, it's not about just the, you know, the, the you know, static and, and the backdrop and so on. It's about connecting. They also need to connect with the new generations. And they see f football as a platform to do that. So they demand different things from us. Right? And, and that, is also a, that is also an important element of this journey. No? To your question, I think uh, I honestly can say, I mean, from, from my, from my uh, 10 months uh, uh, in the club, that Sevilla, Sevilla always tried to be on the forefront. So there's a willingness there's a willingness to be on the forefront. We always say that this team has been built on three things. A passion and a feeling, a passion and a feeling, a healthy but limitless ambition, and then a vision for the future. No? So it was probably one of the first, of the first club, clubs to introduce a, an innovation center and a knowledge center in the sports area. No? So the beginning of the, this data, the, the, the creation of the data department is connected to that because if there is somebody in the club who always, who always want to be ahead of the pack, it's Monchi. And he realized time ago that he needed data in order to continue developing and, and, and sharpening its, his model, his scouting model. No? So, so he contacted uh, our, our, data, our, our chief data officer already in Germany. And he was based in Germany before. And he said, I'd like to develop something in this area, a tool for the club in this area. No? And, and that's the way we, we, we started working on it. And then at some point, the club said, well, this is so powerful. We need to internalize it. We need to have it in-house. No? So for me, in many ways, that response to the, and that's also what I find in my area, a, a, genuine, a genuine support for everything that seems to make sense business-wise, uh, but also a willingness to, a willingness to dare, eh, to, uh, to go for opportunities. No? Uh, so what I have realized so far, it's not only for digital marketing, but also for sponsorships and other teams that I've been able to reinforce. So, uh, uh, so, so my boss will say, Jorge, if it makes sense and we can, and this is a business case, I will, always, I will always present like a reason to believe and a business case, they will say fire ahead. And that's what I want to, th that's a testimony that I want to, that I want to that I want to uh, uh, to make explicit, no. So the willingness to stay in the forefront. Fantastic, thank you, Jorge. Before we open it up to you guys, uh, so start start thinking about what questions you want to ask the three fantastic panelists. I want to come to you, Nicolas. We're talking about the metaverse. We're talking about uh, digital activation, digital monetization, predictive, prescriptive, prescriptive, very fancy words. Yet at the same time, the reality of many football organizations or many sports organizations, <laughs> yeah, whether they're leagues, clubs, or federations, is that there is a lack of infrastructure, there's a lack of internal expertise, uh, data is not as structured as, as it is in these two clubs, it's lying all over the place, sometimes it's living inside the personal laptops of the employees, right? This is a, a reality. For value to be so that we can generate value, or so that an organization can generate value in the metaverse. What would be your main recommendations in terms of set yourself up for success so that you can manage the metaverse when it's ripe? Every time you say metaverse, you do this. So we understand that metaverse is far away. There's nothing right now. So we have uh, many clients in the sports industry in, in North America and Europe, and the first thing I tell them is that the metaverse is not a place to jump and just go right now. There's a road to get to the metaverse, and the road to get to the metaverse starts by understanding that our consumers, our fans, they want to get immersed. So 3D world is probably the first step before we go to the metaverse. So don't be scared to fail. That's, that's what I have to say. The, the, the leaders of the future are going to be the risk takers of today. 
And right now, just trying, doing things, just opening up to new opportunity, knowing that the metaverse is there. I, believe, believe me, it's not a fad. Billions of dollars are getting poured into the metaverse right now from huge companies around the world. So the first step that we need to take is just look at what's out there, start digitalizing your asset, do your first step into the metaverse, maybe a web 2.5, not necessarily web 0.3. If I ask you today, okay, take your phone and go buy an NFT, do you know where to go? M most of us don't know where to go to buy an NFT, but there are you know, web worlds out there that allows you to do the first step for most of the people that don't know what NFT are. So 3D worlds, uh, understanding that our fans are not there yet too, so step-by-step -step approach. But first step, digitalization. Second step, trying stuff. Third step, understanding how to monetize all this. Um, that would be the, uh, the step that I would take to do it. Fantastic. And I think we heard twice already today, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to test. Don't be afraid to try things out. Yeah. Fabio mentioned it this morning. You're mentioning it as well. So I, I will finish with one thing. Um, I, I just came from, so my story with the metaverse started with the Olympics in Tokyo two years before. And I just came back from Paris to talk to the Olympics in Paris. Big, big, big events around the world are positioning themselves to be in the metaverse, or at least make the first step into the metaverse. So we see big corporations, big companies doing steps into the metaverse. We don't need to invest a zillion dollars into the metaverse. The first step is just the first step that you want to take towards one direction. Absolutely. To, to confirm your point, last week um, I was in Paris, I was speaking with the Paris 24 Olympic and Paralympic organizers and they are creating a digital twin of the games, right? They, so they're already anticipating some of the digital revenues that could be generated at Olympic Games and Paralympic Games in the future. Guys, we have very few minutes. I want to give you a chance to ask some questions. Yes, we have uh, a microphone. Can we get it to the lady there in the third row, please? If you may stand up, tell us who you are, well, where you work, and please, uh, your question. Thank you. Okay. So Hi. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <coughs> so my name is Julia. I'm from Vasco da Gama, from Brazil. Came all the way from there. Mm. Welcome. So we are all talking about fans and entertainment out of the field. We're not talking about on field. And Nicholas brought the F1 case about Netflix, but they didn't stop there. It's a really nice case, the Netflix and the entertainment and out of the, the racetrack. But they also have F1 TV. And I don't know if you all have been there, but that's amazing. Um, that's a new way to consume Formula One, like the, the real way, race. So if I want, I can watch in one screen the race. The other screen, I have all the data, like from the actual race that's just going on. And after that, I can also choose one or two or three um, ra uh, drivers that I can follow them. So that's a new way to consume the race. And what do you think it will be a new way to consume football? Because I depend on the, the streaming to get the, the news. I depend on the streaming to get all the data. Um, don't you think that there is something else that we can talk about the data inside of the game, inside of the field, before like going out of the field? Thank you for your question. That's a great question. Who, who would like to tackle that? In my opinion, there is, we have a problem because uh, here in the, in the old days, you, know, you ask somebody to, to, to take the car, you know, go into a traffic jam, they arrive, arrive to the stadium, uh, make a queue, uh, don't, don't be allowed to, to, have to drink a beer, to go to a place, you, you get water on your, your body, and then watch the match without the highlights, and, and you have to pay for that. So, uh, it's, so it's very difficult. So we have to change the mentality. And what you say, we have to change our stadium into a 5G stadium where the people, they can be also in the internet because they want to do the both things together. Now there is nobody watching a football match without the mobile. So uh, in the stadium it has to be the same. And if we are gonna offer the clients uh, experience in the metaverse, they will, have, they, will be, they will have to do the same experience in the stadium. And even better, if you are in the stadium, you can have an, a, a better experience in the metaverse because there is something unique that you can do in the stadium. So for me, it's very important that we, in the future, we introduce the digital experience in the real experience inside the stadium. This is also a challenge for us. Ramon, thank you very much. With your permission, we're gonna take more questions. I know there are more. 
I, I, Sorry. There's a question uh, there in the back, in the middle, please, and then we'll come to the gentleman here up front. Thank you. My name is Javier Jiménez. I am here on behalf of Ponferradina, Spanish Professional Football Club. So my two quick questions is for Ramona and Jorge, both of you. Or, uh, this morning I found out that La Liga has signed the, the has formalized the, the agreement with TVM, the Metaverse company. Uh, maybe this question should be for La Liga, but what is your opinion? Uh, I know the, the body of the, the contract because I signed it off on behalf of Ponferradina. But what, what, what is the scope? Uh, you know, we, we have we gave them the, the, the license rights of our stadium, badge, store. But what are they doing? What are they going to do with, with them if you know the scope? I am not sure if, if Betis and Sevilla, you know, two main clubs of, of La Liga, uh, have signed this, this agreement. But uh, Ramon mentioned that uh, you're going to move with La Liga, maybe then you'll get your, your own way. But what do you think about uh, the near future? Uh, it, uh, maybe it would be the metaverse uh, ecosystem in La Liga, uh, something like our broadcasting rights, that um, we are going to be compelled to, to share our metaverse rights, or maybe we'll be able to, to take our own way. Thank you, Javier, Thank for you. the question. I think it's a, <clears throat> I think it's a great question, uh, Javier. Um, there are so many open questions. Eh? That's why that's why I can say. I mean, it's it's a. I think it's no secret, I and mean, it's not a hugely sensitive information. We as a VFC haven't signed yet, because we see there are still so many open things, so many things to we we need to understand better. I feel uh, I mentioned before. Uh, I referred before to this revolution that we are all experimenting. No, uh, I think we are all, we we are all on a learning curve. Huh? So in the past few months. There's so much uh, my team and myself have learned about blockchain, fan tokens, NFTs, all that jazz. I mean, it was, it's just immense. I mean, it's just massive. We have read so many reports. We have spoken to so many people. And based on that knowledge that we, are, that we continue to build, we've been taking our first decisions. No? For us in the metaverse, there's a still a, a lot to be known, no? a, a, to, a lot to be untapped. No? That's why we as Sevilla, and I can respond uh, <coughs> you know, very, very straightforward to your question, we, we haven't signed yet. That doesn't mean we will not sign, but we are requesting much more information. So maybe Ramon can, can illustrate uh, a little bit more. No, no, no we are, we, we are going to sign this agreement because uh, I have thought before, I think there are some, uh, some places that it's better to go as an industry. And I think it's a good idea to, to go with La Liga to the first step. But for sure, we'll have to do our own strategy in the, in the near future. But now we, have, we are going to go the first step. We're going to be there with La Liga. <laughs> Thank you for the question. We have another question here. If you can stand up, yes. tell us who you are, please. Yes, hello. My name is Joaquin Martin. And on behalf of Humanox, it's a tech company uh, working with data, smart sheen pads. My question is for Nicolas, but also as well for uh, Jorge and Ramon. Uh, what do you think is the role of data in terms of fan engagement in the metaverse? Yeah, that's probably the, the biggest challenge that the metaverse will have right now. Because um, if you take decentralized metaverse like uh, Decentraline, for example, you have people from all over the world coming to this platform, coming onto your, it's very difficult to understand where people are from, data with the, like that data uh, to get data from them. So it's very difficult because if you look at uh, a Facebook F Meta, they, they can provide all the information about these people. Right now, as the metaverse is getting built, it's very difficult to get data from people. Secondly, the new generation doesn't want to give you your da their data. Cookies are going away. They don't want to give you their data. What they buy, they own. So that's the idea of the NFT. When I buy something, I own it. So we're going to need to find ways to use data that we have, but it's going to be more and more difficult to get data from people. So we need to go back to the quality of the experience that we provide. Because getting data from people is great, but people loving you, people loving what you do, that's probably the first thing that you need to think about when you think about your fans. So I, I hear a lot about data, data. It's great, but that will be the first difficult step that we're going to have. Now, in decentralized metaverse, I said that you're going to own your piece of land. That's when people will come in 
and the experience that you will create, the quality that you will, the, of the experience that you will create, will allow people to say, I lived a great experience, here's my name, call me back, let's do something together. And that's what the metaverse is going to be all about. The new generation is looking at us to create great experiences for them, and the experiences that they want are not the experiences of the past. Thank you, Nicholas. Just, just a quick, I, I was meaning about data coming from the game, coming from the players, performance, uh, speed, all that, uh, which, what's happening on the, on the field and can have a reference. Well, that's going to be amazing. Okay, that's going to be amazing because I, uh, let me give you something that we're doing right now. So, um, break dancing, okay, it's going to be something that's going to go at the Olympics. So we, the, the, there's an inter international competition. The great finale is going to be in New York. Bringing people inside New York in the Bronx where it started with the first breakdancer, having conversation with old school people that were part of the breakdancing revolution in the Bronx, being able to talk to them, being able to engage with these people, going live in the Bronx 360. So that's going to be amazing. amazing. Don't forget that live will always be number one. What's the second best thing after live? That's going to be the metaverse or hybrid program. But the data that you get from the player, that's what people want. That's what I'm saying when I say the, the, the fans are going to be willing to give you their information if you provide them with something that they want or taking them to a place that they want to go. So immersive places, getting data, getting closer to the fan, I think that's what, how you're going to get the data. Fantastic. Nicolas, thank you. Let's take one last question, please, and then I think we have to wrap up. My name is uh, Benito Castro. Uh, I work for a small media which is uh, called uh, DeporteTecnologico.com here in Sevilla. And I would like to know something, I, I mean, easy, but I don't know if easy to, to answer. Is Metaverse could mean uh, the end of social media? <laughs> if it hasn't already started. Um, I think any revolution in technology is a change of behavior. When Facebook came, it, it, it replaces the internet that was very scary. We, we wouldn't put our own name in the internet at the beginning. Then Facebook said, here's that place where you're going to be amongst friends. So give me your name. Give me your, your dog's picture. Give me, give me, give me. And at one point, TikTok came. And then the other one, the other one. So it won't replace social media, but social media will integrate the metaverse. And then we'll see certain platforms disappear because they're going to be Web.2 platform. So if everybody engaged in virtual worlds, well, the conversation that we're going to have, Facebook or any platform, forget technology. They're all about conversing. They're all about exchanging. Immersive world is going to, are going to allow better engagement and better conversation. So certain social media as it stands right now will disappear. Social media will integrate the metaverse. So the metaverse will be a social media by itself, plus it will be an economy, plus it will be a shop, plus it will be a lot of things, including social media. My, my main takeaways from, from this session are three. One, content is king and context is queen. <laughs> uh, number two is invest on your data and digital transformation efforts because it will pay back big time. And number three is that your sponsors and your partners of the future will not simply look at what banners can be hung in, in the stadium or how, how big is the banner on the website. They're looking for more relationship to be developed thanks to you and with you, with your fan base and with your ecosystem. These are three very simple learnings that I, I extracted. I'm sure you guys have a million, million more, but enjoy the rest of the Football Innovation Forum. Enjoy the game tonight, enjoy the party, and a warm applause for our three experts here.